commercial free Catholic charismatic channel. He's strengthening the faith of so many people. To promote the gift of church teaching, dedicated for the new evangelization. God's blessings on your work, may God bless and prosper you. Shalom World, God's own channel. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Father Jeremy Leatherby. I am a priest of the Diocese of Sacramento, California in the United States, and it's my joy to be with you today. I'm going to speak about that which is the delight of my heart, and I believe the delight of the Most Holy Trinity, as we know by faith, the Blessed Virgin Mary. A number of years ago, at a small parish to which I was assigned as pastor, I received a phone call late one evening at about 8 o'clock at night. And normally the, the phone calls only come in late when there's some sort of emergency, and that was the case then. And there was a middle-aged woman on the phone, maybe about 50, 60 years old, and she said, Father, can you please come to my mother's house right away? We think she's close to the end. And indeed, the woman, after I saw her, she died two hours later. And so I said to this woman, of course, I'll, I'll be right over. And she wanted me to bring Holy Communion, to bring oil to anoint her mom. So I make my way over to the house, and I'm greeted by this woman at the door. And she brings me back to her mother's bedroom. And I had this experience, like I've only had a few times in my life, that, that was so powerful. I walked into this woman's bedroom, and I had this overwhelming sense of her holiness. The woman was confined to bed. I would come to find out that she had been bedridden for over 10 years. And I walk in, and I, I just immediately knew that I was in the presence of a woman who was far holier than I am, or I might be. And, and I immediately, I thought, I, I wonder how she became so holy. And it was, as we find in Scripture, you remember when our Lord goes to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. When did John know who Jesus was? When did John know that Jesus was the Messiah? It was only after the dove descended upon our Lord. And that's when John knew that here is the anointed one. And so thereafter he could say, Behold the Lamb of God. Yet what did John say when Jesus came to him to be baptized, before he knew that he was the Christ? He says, it is you who should be baptizing me. He knew that he was not worthy because our Lord was holier than he was. And so that was the sort of experience I had with this woman. And again, I wondered, how did she become so holy? And I walk into the room and she asked me a question that took me by surprise. She says, Father, can I make a request of you? And I'm looking at this dying woman, and of course my, my heart's desire is to do whatever she asks. And I said, I said, yes, of course. And she said, will you speak to me about Mary? And it was the last thing I asked, I, I expected her to say, and I, I said, do you mean the Blessed Virgin Mary? And she said, yes, will you tell me of her? And so I spoke about what we believe by faith. I spoke about the apparitions of Mary down through the centuries. Then I spoke of my own personal devotion to Our Lady. And when all that was done, after a few minutes, I, I looked at this woman. I said, can I ask you, why did you want me to speak to you about Mary? This woman shared with me that she was the mother of 11 biological children and she was the foster mother of 11 other children. When she was 30 years old, she was reading the writings of St. Paul, and she came upon that mysterious line where Paul says, I make up for what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ. And when she read that line, she, she took a moment to meditate upon it, and her heart was pierced, and she said she knew in that moment that she was being asked by God to do the same to offer her sufferings for the good of the church, for the salvation of souls. And she said she did not know what that would look like, but she knew that she was being invited. And so she said in that moment, yes, Lord, I, I want to imitate St. Paul. 
the last 10 years of this woman's life, she was bed bound and she knew that all of it was part of the fulfillment of this self offering, that she was suffering everything for souls, for the good of the church. This dying woman says to me, Father, when I was six years old, I was orphaned. My dad had died when I was only two, and then my mother passed away, and I was put into a Catholic orphanage. She said, my first night there, I, I cried the entire night, and the next morning we had Sunday Mass, and I went to Mass, and I was crying throughout the Mass, and she said, but during the homily, the priest spoke so beautifully about Our Lady that afterwards I went to the side altar and I knelt down before the statue of our Blessed Mother and I looked up to her and I, here I was, a, a little six-year-old girl, and I made a deal with Mary. I said to her, Mary, your son never had a sister and I no longer have a mother. I promise I will be your son's sister all the days of my life if you will be a mother to me. And two hours before she died, she looked at me and she said, Father, in my entire life, she has never failed me. And I knew why that woman was so holy, because she had given herself to Our Lady. My brothers and sisters, it is the secret of the saints. Any saint, any biography of almost any saint you read, you will find therein that they had a unique relationship with and devotion to our Blessed Mother Mary. And, and we, uh, we could go all down through the line. We, we can think of, of modern saints. Someone like, well, not yet canonized, though very soon, Blessed John Paul II. As a young man, he reads St. Louis de Montfort's book, Total Consecration to Mary. He said he kept that book with him for 18 years, reading it over and over. It brought about the turning point in his life and his spirituality. And so when he became the Holy Father, he would consecrate his entire papacy to Our Lady. And those of us who lived through the papacy of John Paul II know the tremendous fruits that came about because he gave everything to Mary. Blessed Mother Teresa of Calcutta, a woman could not enter her community unless she consecrated herself totally to Mary. When, when our Lord Jesus Christ appeared to Mother Teresa, she was traveling on a train in India, and our Lord appears to her and he asks her to establish a new religious order. Mother Teresa, after that moment, she prayed, she prayed with all her heart that God would give her the grace to establish 15 houses of the missionaries of charity before she died. Right now, we, we all know she ended up establishing 375 before she died. But she wanted 15, one for each decade of the rosary because of this great love for Our Lady. We could go on and on. St. Ignatius of Loyola, our Blessed Mother Mary one time appeared to him. He said from that moment for the rest of his life, he never once struggled with purity. He was given the grace of angelic purity because he saw the woman who was all beautiful, is all beautiful, and he could never desire anything less. St. Francis of Assisi, he called Our Lady the spouse of the Holy Spirit because of her union with the Holy Spirit. St. Maximian Kolbe, on one occasion they, they thought he was going to die. He thought he wouldn't make it through the night. And one of his, his brother Franciscans heard him wheezing and, and coughing and comes into his cell and he, he says, you know, Father, Father Maximilian, are you going to be okay? And he says, I, I don't know that I'll make it through this night. He says, if I don't, will you do me a favor? Will you tell all of my brothers my final words are these? Stay close to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Where do we find this in Scripture, this relationship with Our Lady, that she is the one to help us become holy? 
You remember the visitation when Our Lady goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth. What do we believe as Catholics happened in that moment? In the Catholic Church, we celebrate only three birthdays. What three birthdays do we celebrate? What three individuals do we believe were born without sin? First, Christmas, the birthday of our Lord Jesus Christ. God cannot sin. He can have no sin in his soul. Second, we celebrate the birthday of Our Lady, born without sin because she was conceived without sin. What is the third and the only other birthday we celebrate as Catholics? We celebrate the birthday of St. John the Baptist. We not only celebrate his martyrdom, the day of his death, but also the day of his birth. Why? Because when our Blessed Mother Mary went to visit Elizabeth, when Elizabeth heard the sound of her greeting, she said, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. She was filled with the Holy Spirit as John was filled with the Holy Spirit. And what happens when a person is filled with the Holy Spirit? They are set free from sin. The Holy Spirit and sin cannot coexist together. Why was John freed from sin? Because Our Lady brought her son to him. A number of years ago, a spiritual director of mine who, who was a great Marian theologian, a, a Mariologist, he shared a letter that Mother Teresa, Blessed Mother Teresa of Calcutta had written to him in which she talks about this moment of the visitation. And I want to read to you just a few lines because it sums up that which is at the heart of my talk today, the role of Our Lady. She wrote to him, very great holiness becomes very simple if we belong fully to Our Lady. Our sanctification, our holiness, helping us to grow in holiness is her main duty. She went in haste to help Jesus sanctify John, and so it will be with you and me if only we love her unconditionally and trust her fully. The more we abandon ourselves to her totally and without reserve, the holier we will be. For nothing is impossible for those whose mother she is. Our sanctification is her main duty. But how is Mary capable of this? Where, where is this revealed to us? Again, going back to Scripture, going back to the root of our faith, sacred Scripture and sacred tradition. St. Thomas Aquinas, the angelic doctor of the church, considered the greatest of all theologians, he said this. He said that there are three acts of creation that are utterly perfect, that are without flaw. First, he said the holiest thing that God ever made was the sacred humanity of His Son. When the second person of the Holy Trinity took flesh, that flesh was without error. It was without stain. It was perfect. It is the greatest creation of all time because it was that which was made to become one with God. Second, he said, the heavens. Heaven is a created reality. And St. Thomas Aquinas said, heaven could not be better than it is. It is without flaw. And he said third, the Blessed Virgin Mary. He said, Our Lady could not be more beautiful than she is. She could not be more virtuous than she is. She could not be holier than she is. And what's so amazing to think about, though, is where did the highest act of creation, the sacred humanity of our Lord, take place? In the Blessed Virgin Mary. And from that moment until the end of time, the greatest wonders will continue to take place in and through Mary.
because God never changes. A year ago, on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, actually a few days after the feast, I was at a Catholic bookstore, and a lady, since she'd been thinking about the Immaculate Conception, she says, Father, uh, do you have a minute? And I said, yes, of course. She said, I wanted to ask you a question about the Immaculate Conception. She says, there's something I don't understand, and it's this. She said, if Our Lady had to be immaculately conceived without sin from the first moment of her conception, in order to carry Jesus in her womb, and that when we receive Holy Communion, we receive the same Jesus, which that is what we believe by faith. It is the one same Lord Jesus Christ whom we receive in Holy Communion. If Our Lady had to be without sin to carry Him, how can we receive communion without first going to confession? I, I go to Mass every day. Shouldn't I go to confession every day in order to be ready and worthy to receive Him? And I said to her, I said, you could go to confession every day if you want. You'll probably drive your priest crazy, but you can do it. But I said, it's not because Our Lady carried Jesus that she had to be immaculately conceived and without sin. It is because God took Jesus' flesh from her that she had to be immaculately conceived. It wasn't to carry our Lord. It was to give her body and blood so that Jesus could be formed from her. They shared the one same flesh. We don't believe that God infused a new human nature in Mary. He took a human nature from her. Our Lady knows how to form Jesus Christ. She did it in the beginning, and she will do it until the end of time in all the members of the body of the church. The closer we draw to her, the more perfectly she forms him in us and conforms us to him. When we give ourselves to Our Lady, the more and more we do so, the more and more she speaks in us the words that she spoke at the wedding feast of Cana. Do whatever he tells you. You'll sometimes hear people, either non-Catholics or fallen away Catholics or, or Catholics who don't know their faith very well, they'll say, you know, why would you, why would you give yourself to Mary when you can go straight to Jesus? Right? It would be better to go directly to our Lord. We can go directly to our Lord, of course. Why does the church recommend, why have all the saints taught to go to our Lord in and through Mary? A man one time, I was locking up my parish late at night, and I went into, I, ha I hadn't yet made my holy hour for the day. I, I try to spend an hour before the Blessed Sacrament every day. And so I, I lock up the church and I go in to make my holy hour and I, I'm surprised to find a man kneeling in the front pew. And he, he looked a, a little ragged, a little shabby, and I thought maybe he was a homeless man who, who had come in to take refuge and perhaps he wanted to sleep in the church that night. But since I wasn't sure, I thought I, I'm just going to go up and pray. And actually, I, I was a little concerned about my own safety. I didn't know this man. And I went up and I, I knelt before the Blessed Sacrament on the stairs of the sanctuary. And I was there for 40 minutes kneeling. And this man, I heard him move around a little bit, but he never left his spot. And so then I started to get more and more concerned. Okay, why is he still here? Why hasn't he said anything? Finally, he comes up and approaches me. And he says to me, Father, do you have a minute? And when he called me Father, I, I knew he was a Catholic, right? Oh, only Catholics call priests father or, or have the comfort of doing so. So I knew he was Catholic and I said, I said, yeah, what can I do for you? And he said, Father, will you please pray for me? He said, I, I went to the doctors today and I found out that I have stage four cancer and it's so far advanced, I, I probably only have a couple months left to live. And I, I said, okay, I, of course I will pray for you. And I wasn't sure exactly what he meant, whether he wanted me to pray for him in that moment or just sort of pray for him in general. So I, I was trying to respond to him and he turned and faced the tabernacle. So I did too and I, I spent the next 10 minutes praying for him. And then he turns around and, and sits on the steps of the sanctuary. And so I, I turn with him and I, I sit down and he says to me, Father, do you have any advice for me? 
And I said, you know, there, there's one thing above all that I'd recommend. And that is that you place yourself in Our Lady's hands. She's the miracle worker. St. Francis de Sales called her the saint maker. And I said, I've, I've done so throughout my priesthood. And I cannot tell you the great graces that come from entrusting yourself to her. And he said, you know what, Father, I, I don't get that. He said, you know, to be honest, I, I left the Catholic Church several years ago and I'm, I'm practicing in a Protestant church now, but my mom's a devout Catholic and I always see her going up and kneeling down before the statue of Our Lady and praying her rosary. Why? Why not just go straight to Jesus? And I looked at him and I said, what did you do when you walked up to me? He said, well, what do you mean? I said, when you approached me, what, what's the first thing you said? He said, well, I asked you to pray for me. And I said, and do you believe that we can pray for one another and our prayers are effective? He said, well, yeah, of course I do, Father. I'm a faithful Christian. And I said, do you believe the saints in heaven are alive? Well, yeah, of course. I said, and what about their prayers? I said, if they are alive in heaven and one with God, how much more powerful are their prayers than ours and Our Lady above all else? And he goes, oh my gosh, Father, I'd never thought about that. My brothers and sisters, Our Lady, she prays for, she is the greatest intercessor. Uh, I, a number of years ago, during my seminary studies, I was in Rome. I had the opportunity to do my theological training there. And two days after the election of Pope Benedict, a priest friend of mine contacts me and he says, he says, hey, do you, do you have time for dinner tonight? And I said, well, yeah. He said, I've, I've got to tell you a story. You'll never believe this. I said, okay. So I, I met him for dinner. So Pope John Paul II had died just a, a couple of weeks before. Pope Benedict had just been elected. We go out to dinner and he says, last night I was present for an exorcism. He said, there are the chief exorcists of the church in Rome. The, the most serious cases are given to them from, from all throughout the world. And he says, I was present for this exorcism. He says, the only reason I was there is because there is a priest who was sent here to be trained as an exorcist from the United States and he doesn't yet speak Italian. And since I've been here a few years, I could translate for him. And he says, we we're present for this exorcism. And man, I could tell you so many stories and, and just a couple of quick ones. He said, he said, there were six priests in the room. And at one moment, the, the chief exorcist, he asked all of us to raise our hands in prayer. And he says, as soon as we lifted up our hands, before we had even uttered a word of prayer, the demon possessing the woman before us began to shriek. And he said, it was, it was so hideous. And I looked down at my hands in that moment and I realized like never before what it means to be a priest, that my hands are not my own. Another thing he said, they went through a litany of saints. So they, they say St. Joseph and St. Francis and St. Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross. They're going all the way through and they get to the end of the litany. And then the priest says, the exorcist says, Pope John Paul II, pray for us. And my priest friend said at that moment, she let out such a curdling shriek, unlike any other saint, had gotten and all the priests in the room looked at each other and they understood that John Paul II really was the saint whom he had appeared to be. But in relation to Our Lady and this talk, after going through the whole litany of saints, the exorcist called on our Blessed Mother Mary. And he said in that moment there was a presence in the room that all the priests felt and, and they had this knowing that it was stronger than anything in the universe, that no demon had any chance against Our Lady. And he said all of a sudden after that, they have this sense of this presence and it was like, it was like there was the tearing of the veil 
between the natural and the supernatural, between the physical and the spiritual realms. And it was as if they were overhearing a conversation between two demons, a lesser demon pleading his case to a superior demon. And it's, it's like that we believe that angels, there are angels, there are archangels, there are cherubim and seraphim. Not all angels all the, are the same. It is the same with the fallen angels. Some are greater than others. And this demon was pleading his case to another demon and he says, I, I could not help it. I, I couldn't help it. There, there was nothing I could do. I couldn't stop it. I could not stop Joseph. She intervened. Joseph, Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, had just been elected Pope. There was nothing he could do. He could not stop it because she, Our Lady, intervened. She intercedes for the body of Christ the Church because she wants every member to resemble the head, our Lord Jesus Christ. She is always with us. I end with this story. Several years ago, and speaking of her motherly role, I went on a pilgrimage with about 30 other Americans. And before we went, it was recommended that we all go to confession. Everybody in the group went except one man. He, he was too embarrassed or ashamed. He hadn't been in so long. But none of us knew that he hadn't gone. We go on this pilgrimage, and there's a priest there who, who has a, a charismatic gift of, he's able to, to read hearts. And the way this works is he would pray over people, and when he would pray over them, he would be able to know things about them. For example, there was one woman in our group who that morning had discovered a lump on her chest. And she said when she did so, she was bathing, and she immediately got angry with God. Really, I, I travel across the world on a pilgrimage, and this is what you do to me? So the priest comes, and he says, what would you like me to pray for for you? And she says, Father, I ask for healing. He says, okay. He puts his hands on her head, and he pulls back, and he says, how can God heal you when you are not fully open to him? You don't want his will. You want your will. Surrender to him, and then he can heal you. Well, he comes to this man in the group, and he says, what would you like me to pray for? And the man says, Father, just a blessing. That's it, just a blessing. The priest says, okay. He reaches out, and he puts his hands on his head, and when his fingertips touch his head, he goes, oh, you, you haven't been to confession. How can God bless you when your soul is full of sin? Go to confession and then come back to me. And the man is shocked. All of us in the group were thinking, no, no, we, we went to confession. Little did we know that he hadn't, and he hadn't been in 30 years. He goes to confession and he comes back to the priest. And the priest says, do you want to know why God allowed you to live all these years and why he's granting you this gift of his mercy? He says, do you remember when you were a young man you remember the occasion where you came home late at night and at two in the morning your mom was in her room on her knees praying the rosary. He says, and you walked in there and you grabbed it and you ripped it out of her hands and snapped it apart and threw it at her. He said, I know of your adolescence. I know of the crimes you committed. I know of the violence. And he, he pulled the man in and whispered in his ear, the names of stores that he robbed, the people he was with, the dates that had happened, things he could not possibly know. And he says, do you want to know why God allowed you to live through all that so that you could receive his mercy today? He said, because your mother at that time made the decision that for the rest of her life every day, she would pray an extra rosary for your salvation. You're alive today because of the Holy Rosary. Our Lady never fails those who entrust themselves to her. And those who do so should also entrust their loved ones that she might become their mother also. My brothers and sisters, I close with this recommendation.
if you have not given your lives totally to Our Lady, there's nothing greater that I could recommend because in doing so, she will lead you totally to her Son. You will know Jesus like never before. You will follow Him with greater courage. You will surrender yourself to His will as you have not been yet able to in your lives. May you come to know Jesus Christ through His mother Mary. And let's close with a Marian prayer and ask her that these truths might become a reality in our lives and that we might come to know and understand them. Hail Mary, the full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God bless you. Teach everything he commanded them to teach. New ways to communicate God's word. Present positive images to our people. This message of truth and salvation. Culture of uh, encounter. Gospel of Christ worldwide. Shalom World TV. Twenty four seven, faith filled, dynamic, virtue building. Commercial free, family friendly, Catholic charismatic channel to the whole world. Promote the gift of church teaching. Dedicated for the new evangelization. Mentor the young into a deeper embrace of the Catholic faith. Wonderful contributions to the church. People of prayer. church with great love taking this to the next step shalom world tv shalom 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 world god's own channel